Hi everyone, Keyboard Warrior here, and welcome back to another keyboard review. Today we will be reviewing one of my favorite keyboards right now. This is the Chill Key ND75. Not gonna waste any time, so let's go straight to the unboxing. This is a 75 keys keyboard with tri mode connectivity that only costs 99 to 105 US dollars. So straight from the box, we see an instruction manual. And for the accessories, we have a USB dongle and an extra cable strip. Now this keyboard has three types of mounting styles, so there's the ND75 top mount, the silica gel mount, and the original O-ring mount. And the last accessory we have here is the cable. This USB-C cable is pretty nice, it looks very thick and shiny, which is different from the regular budget keyboard cable nowadays. Actually, I'm a little surprised there's no keycap and switch puller, but alright. Alright, now let's look at the main prize. So there's no hard plastic cover, but it comes in a kind of cotton kind of a sheet, and there's a plastic wrapping over it. So the plastic wrapping looks alright, very tight, um, just a little bit of cuts here and there. But there's a sign here that says a caution for gel cable, which is right at the right side of the keyboard. Alright, now let me just unwrap this majestic piece, and oh boy, just look at the glossiness of this mountain blue keyboard. Not to hate on the white or black version, but if any of you decide to get this keyboard, just pay a bit of the extra to get the blue or purple color because this gloss is amazing. So it's a very clean design, just one USB-C cable at the top and there's a screen at the front of the keyboard. Now the best thing about this keyboard is this feature, the quick release ball catch system. And that's insane, within 2 seconds, I have already opened up the keyboard and it's ready for modding. Oh yes, yeah, so as the instructions said, be careful because the cable is fragile and at the right side. So when you remove the top casing, just make sure to turn it to the right. Alright, after removing the cable, we can take a look at the top casing. So this is a nice metal clean casing, we can see the ball catch at the top. And from the front, we can see that the screen is attached to the top casing. Okay, now let's take the PCB off the bottom case and... Oh my goodness, did I just break off the cable? A hey, psych! Alright, so this PCB here is actually a magnetic connector which you don't really see in very budget keyboards like this and that's a very good plus point from this keyboard. So other than that, this keyboard's base is using a silicon fit and they are removable just like this. And this is what the bottom casing of the keyboard looks like. It's a very simple metallic design. And now you may be wondering, hey, isn't this a battery keyboard? So where are the batteries? So it's actually hidden behind these screws. And oh man, these screws were extremely small. I mean, look how tiny it is. I mean, average sized. Uh, yeah, I'm someone who's really well used to average sized items so I can handle them well. Alright, so removing this metal plate, oh my gosh, it's so nice and shiny. I hope in the future they sell this as a different attachment, like a mirror kind of a thing. And this is what the battery looks like. There are two 1800 mAh batteries connected to the daughter board. Mm, it's not that large, but it's about 9 to 10 hours per single use. Alright, now let's take a look at the PCB. So we can first remove the magnetic cable connector by removing this cable strip here. Such a simple budget-friendly magnetic connector. So to disassemble this PCB, we're gonna have to unscrew these three screws over here and then we can make use of my gym sessions to pry apart the PCB from the switches. Alright, so this is the 1.2mm flex cut PCB and they do have a 1.6mm non-flex cut but usually that is out of stock. So this is 5 pin hot swappable per key RGB and yes they have the slots over here for screw in stabilizers. And at the back there's a sticky porn foam that I will not pry open because it may damage the foam. Alright and next up we have the transparent PET sheet followed by the black switch pad. Mm, pretty nice stuff here. And the last thing that we have will be the poron foam. And finally, we have the polycarbonate plate over here, which is very, very flexible. I mean, look at it. And that's it for the teardown of the keyboard. So now let's reassemble it and take a look at the other parts of the keyboard. So as you reassemble the keyboard, just remember to make sure that before you put in the top mount that you check the cable is still able to work. Alright, now let's look at the switch. So this is the Gateron EF Dopamine Blue Linear Switch. And this is what it sounds like. Alright, now let's take it apart. So from the bottom housing, it's a very nice and dark blue in colour with 5 pins at the bottom. 
and the top housing is a clear transparent one making the RGB strong and for the spring it is a two stage spring which gives a very nice push back and these are the specs of the switch so the stem over here is also very well factory looped and this is their very nice cherry profile keycaps it is very sharp in the legends and it is double shot pbt and now let's take a look at the plate mounter stabilizers we can see from the wire that it's not very well factory looped and the step doesn't need to be clipped off but also not really very well looped and i just don't get how they did it but it isn't well looped but yet there's no rattle or ticking at all what kind of magic or sorcery are they doing here Such a nice sound but look at the flex on this, it's a little bit stiff but it's alright. And the next feature of this will be the screen over here. You can use it to switch between a lot of options on the keyboard or show a display screen and don't worry you can switch it to the English language. And it's the cute inbuilt display screen that they had. Alright, most important last feature will be the three different mounting style. So the original one that comes with it first will be the split ring o-ring mount to give it a gasket-like performance. Then following that, there is the silica gel mount. So how it is done is by slotting in this silica gel at these 8 slots over here. And then after that, removing the 6 o-ring mounts over here. Now there will be a sound test comparison of the 3 different modes at the end of this video. And the last one will be using this screw in top mount with very tiny, I mean average size screws. So how it's done is by putting the PCB to the top case and using the very average size screws to screw in from the plate to the top casing. Then reconnecting it as such. Now before I leave you with the final sound test, this keyboard is not VIA compatible, but they do have their own software for you to program your macros or RGB and other button functions. Now overall, I do think this is one of the best aluminium keyboard for around 100 US dollars. It is super gorgeous, has quick release with different mounting styles, and it sounds super amazing. If I had a chance to make it better, I just wish that it has a volume knob, brighter RGB, and maybe sell mirror backplates for the customizable aesthetics. Now that's it for my keyboard review of the ND75. If you enjoy it, please leave a like and subscribe, and consider following my Instagram and TikTok for more updates. With that, I'ma leave you with the different sound tests.